The Spanish flu of 1918, which killed nearly 50 million people, didn't actually begin in Spain. That's right, you would be surprised to know how many other false historical facts have been taught to you. In this video, we will uncover the top historical misconceptions that might have slipped into your books. Let's dig in. Cleopatra VII was the renowned queen of Egypt and is often considered the most beautiful and charming woman in history. Despite her allure and fame, there's a common misunderstanding about her background. She's commonly perceived as Egyptian due to her close ties to Egypt. That's simply not true. Cleopatra was of Macedonian Greek heritage, and most history books overlook that. The Ptolemaic dynasty to which Cleopatra belonged stemmed from Ptolemy I, who was of Greek origin. They took control of Egypt after Alexander the Great and maintained their Greek roots. The dynasty refused to learn the native Egyptian language even as rulers in Egypt. However, Cleopatra was the first to do so. Thus, Cleopatra's family history is deeply rooted in Greek heritage, tracing back to the Macedonian origins of the Ptolemaic rulers. The misconception stems from the way Cleopatra immersed herself in Egyptian culture during her time as a queen. She embraced Egyptian culture by speaking the language and adopting local customs, which led many to believe she was Egyptian. Her strong identification with Isis, an Egyptian goddess, furthered this perception. Cleopatra strategically aligned herself with Isis, emphasizing her connection to Egyptian spirituality and symbolizing herself as a divine ruler. George Washington was a crucial figure in American history, known as the first president of the United States. He led the American Revolutionary War and played a significant role in establishing the country's foundations. Beyond his political contributions, Washington's personal life also drew attention due to a particular health issue. During his life, Washington experienced dental problems, which began in his early 20s. He suffered from various dental issues, including toothaches, decay, and tooth loss. John Greenwood, a dentist from New York, was responsible for creating several sets of dentures for Washington. There is a common belief that Washington's dentures were made entirely of wood. In reality, they were crafted from a combination of materials. The dentures were constructed using ivory from hippopotamus or elephant tusks and human and animal teeth. Metal, like gold springs and brass screws, was used to hold the different components together. The misconception about Washington's wooden teeth likely originated from the appearance of his dentures. The ivory used in the construction often stained over time, taking on a brownish hue that resembled wood. Despite Greenwood's efforts to create functional dentures for Washington, his dental issues persisted. He continued to suffer from jaw discomfort and faced speaking problems as well. Images of daring adventurers sailing the seas in search of treasure and freedom come to mind when we think of pirates. Movies like Pirates of the Caribbean show them as cool rebels wearing eye patches and carrying swords, making their life at sea seem exciting and carefree. They're shown as clever and cunning, navigating treacherous waters, engaging in epic ship battles, and seeking hidden riches buried on remote islands. However, the reality of piracy was far more than this image. Historical pirates were diverse, ranging from escaped slaves seeking freedom to sailors displaced by wars. They operated during the golden age of piracy from the late 17th to the early 18th century, primarily in the Caribbean and other parts of the world's oceans. These pirates didn't always fit the Hollywood image. Life aboard pirate ships was harsh. They lived under brutal conditions and often starved. Contrary to the glamorous portrayal, piracy was a challenging and risky profession. Pirates faced dangers from battles, storms, and the constant threat of capture by naval forces. While they did capture valuable loot, including gold, silver, and spices, the spoils were rarely as plentiful as depicted in movies. What's the most iconic symbol of American cowboy culture? Books, TV shows, and movies will tell you it's the wide-brimmed Stetson hats. While the Stetson cowboy hat certainly gained popularity in the late 19th century, historical records and photographs reveal a different reality. Cowboys of the American West actually preferred and wore derby or bowler hats. If we compare the features of the two hats, derby hats were more practical. The rounded brim made them perfect for various tasks such as cattle herding and ranching. They offered a snugger fit and were less likely to get blown off in the wind than wide-brimmed cowboy hats. Famous cowboys of the American West have been photographed wearing derby or other kinds of hats. Famous gunslinger and gambler Bat Masterson also favored the derby. The classic photo of American West gunfighter Billy the Kid depicts the outlaw wearing what resembles a top hat, while Bill Hickok was photographed in a flat pancake hat. The phrase, let them eat cake, brings to mind the image of Marie Antoinette, the French queen who was considered extravagant and uncaring. Marie Antoinette's reign coincided with a period of significant social and economic turmoil. The phrase allegedly emerged during food scarcity when bread, a staple food for many, was in short supply. 
The story goes that upon hearing that the poor had no bread, the queen callously remarked, let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. This expression highlighted her ignorance and lack of concern for her subject's plight. But here's the trouble. Historians believe that Marie Antoinette did not say this phrase. The saying was first mentioned in the book Confessions, written by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau. However, the book was published when Marie Antoinette was still a child, so she couldn't have said those words when Rousseau wrote about them. Lady Antonia Fraser, a biographer, argues that another French royal said this around a century earlier, suggesting that it was likely Marie Therese, Louis XIV's wife. Historians believe that the phrase was associated with Marie Antoinette to paint her as a heartless and out-of-touch queen who didn't know the hardships of common people. Napoleon Bonaparte was a French military leader and emperor who conquered much of Europe in the early 19th century. In contrast to his great achievements, Napoleon has always been considered to have a short stature. The misconception about Napoleon's height stemmed from various factors. He was listed as 5 feet 2 inches in French measurements of the time, which, when converted to English measurements, equated to about 5 feet 6.5 inches. Therefore, confusion arose due to the difference between French and British measuring systems. Inaccurate translations led to the belief that he was remarkably short. Moreover, if we compare Napoleon's height to the average height of Frenchmen during this era, he was actually of average height for that time, not particularly short. To this day, Napoleon is portrayed as a short person in books, movies, and comics. In 1929, the United States faced a monumental economic disaster, the stock market crash. This event, often called Black Thursday, saw stock prices plummet drastically in a very short time. People lost enormous amounts of money and businesses crumbled. It was a time of immense suffering and unemployment across the country. Following the 1929 stock market crash, rumors that Wall Street workers had started jumping off buildings began to spread. The stock market crash indeed led to significant distress and financial ruin for many. Based on statistics, the suicide rate in the United States increased from 17.0 per 100,000 people in 1929 to 21.3 in 1932 during the worst of the financial calamity. However, the notion that people were jumping off buildings was not true. Suicides were sensationalized and exaggerated by the media. Comedians like Will Rogers helped spread the rumors, alleging that people had to wait in line to jump out of a window. On September 22, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, a significant step in the fight against slavery in the United States. The proclamation declared that as of January 1, 1863, all enslaved people in the states were set to be free. However, it's crucial to note that the Emancipation Proclamation did not immediately free 4 million men, women, and children held in slavery in the United States. The document applied only to enslaved people in the Confederacy. It didn't free slaves in the border states that remained loyal to the Union or in areas already under Union control. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was a crucial step in the fight against slavery and shifted the focus of the Civil War. But it wasn't until the passage of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution in December 1865, after the Civil War had ended, that slavery was officially abolished throughout the country. The 1918 influenza pandemic, often called the Spanish flu, did not necessarily begin in Spain. Despite its name, the pandemic's origins are not definitively tied to Spain. During World War I, many countries involved in the conflict censored their media to maintain morale. Spain, however, was neutral during the war. Therefore, when the flu broke out in Spain, the cases were reported with utmost truth. The Spanish king, Alfonso XIII, also contracted it in the spring of 1918. As a result, people wrongly assumed that Spain was the origin of the pandemic. Other countries with restricted press downplayed the outbreak's severity to avoid damaging morale during wartime. To this day, historians are unsure where the 1918 flu strain began, but the first recorded cases were at a U.S. Army camp in Kansas in March 1918. By the end of 1919, it had infected up to a third of the world's population and killed nearly 50 million people. It was the worst flu pandemic in recorded history. That's all for today. Which one of these historical facts shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching.